then you put that together. I walk like dad and he ended up in a wheelchair. Knowledge, logic, you start putting this together and this happens by neural connections. Other sensory cues, I've told some of you the story of a baker I saw once who got extreme phantom hand pain. So he had his hand amputated, he would got his hand stuck in an industrial bread kneader. And he had it amputated and 10 years later I saw him and he would get severe phantom hand pain on Saturday mornings. And after a while he worked out with some more detective work than anything else. But Saturday mornings was when his neighbours came over with a fresh loaf of bread. And it was the bread that would set off his hand pain. And his very sophisticated pain management program was to put up tissues up his nose first thing Saturday morning. So there'd be no molecules going up his nose. He rang me on a Sunday. He'd retrained for Scotland Yard. And he rang me on my mobile, which I don't give out my mobile phone number. But I was walking along, my phone rang, private number. I said, hello, it's Lorimer. Hi, Lorimer. It's David. <laughs> I said, sorry, it's who? It's David. I'm sorry, I can't understand you. It's David, the guy with the hand. So it didn't sound like him at all. And I thought, oh, and I said, you don't mean David, the guy without the hand. <laughs> oh, very funny. I said, David, you can take the tissues out. Oh, hi, it's David. He still had the tissues up his nose 36 hours later. His very sophisticated pain management exposure program was to wait a slightly longer every Saturday morning before he put his tissues in. And over, I think it was about eight or nine months, he weaned off the tissues and he had no more phantom hand pain. A few serious sinus infections, but <laughs> it was worth it. But in that particular situation, and that's the most profound example that I've had, it was other sensory cues that set off his pain neurotag. <laughs>